Most of us know the solar system as the simple eight planet model of Mercury, Venus, the Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. But that's not how it has always been. Our solar system came about in a dynamic way. Our early solar system likely had a lot more planets than eight. And today there's one particular planet that used to be in our solar system I wanted to discuss with you. The early solar system must have been a very different place from what we see of it today. Several features such as the tilt of Uranus, the high iron concentration of Mercury, the presence of lithium on the sun and the Earth's moon are best explained by introducing more planets into the early solar system. But before we get into any details we first need to understand the Nice model. Named after the French city, the Nice model attempts to explain some of the oddities which arose in the early solar system, mainly the planet's orbit. In particular, the gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune, their orbits cannot really be explained naturally, particularly in reference to Uranus and Neptune, which orbits are too far from the sun for them to have formed there. Current theories of planetary formation do not allow for the accretion of Uranus and Neptune at their present positions. The protoplanetary disk was too diffuse there and the timescales were too long. This all seems to suggest they formed at a position much closer to the Sun than the one they presently occupy. Additionally, the model attempts to explain a very unusual region of the Kuiper Belt, called the Kernel. This is a region of Kuiper Belt objects which have very similar yet unnatural orbits. Objects such as Orcus, Haumea and Pluto share a resonance with the planet Neptune, despite lacking gravitational interaction with the planet. Additionally, they are all with semi-major axis at 44 to 44.5 astronomical units, with low inclination and very moderate eccentricity. The existence of the kernel poses strong constraint on models of the early solar system. It all seems to suggest that Neptune a long time ago formed a lot closer to the Sun and then migrated outwards at a later point, interacting with these resonant trans-Neptunian objects to give birth to the kernel region. So what could have brought this situation about? The first explanation given for these issues was Jupiter itself. At some point in the early solar system's history, the planet was thought to have migrated outwards. And when doing so, it pushed the other gas giants outwards as well. As well as pushing the Kuiper Belt objects into their weird orbits. Jupiter's gravitational field is massive and would definitely be capable of single-handedly altering the orbits of the entire solar system. Even today it's largely thanks to Jupiter that our inner solar system is safeguarded against comets from the outer solar system. Without Jupiter, asteroid impacts would be much more common. However, when this idea was converted into a simulation, Uranus and Neptune were pushed away way further than where they are now destroying the Kuiper Belt in the process and being ejected from the solar system entirely. This strongly suggested this theory was probably not the right answer. So what else could explain these strange phenomena? David Nesforny from the Southwest Research Institute in Boulder, Colorado had an idea. In 2011 he published a paper describing how the planets could have moved in which he made the assumption that there must have been another planet involved somewhere, possibly between Uranus and Saturn, a gas giant very similar in mass to Neptune and Uranus, which had interacted with the other planets to bring about the current situation. Simulations featuring a fifth giant planet reproduce the orbits of the outer solar system at an average rate of 5% of the time as opposed to 1% reproduction rate for only four giants. This fifth gas giant, which likely formed around 6 astronomical units from the Sun, with a period of approximately 15 years, formed in the very early solar system. It was likely older than the Earth, forming at around the same time as Uranus and Neptune 4 billion 555 million years ago. This would also predate the ignition of nuclear fusion in our Sun itself. Around 4 billion 540 million years ago, it is believed that Jupiter started migrating quickly inwards toward the Sun, approaching as close as one and a half astronomical units before being halted by Saturn. This is known as the Grand Tech Hypothesis. This made the inner protoplanetary disk very thin, explaining among others the small size of Mars. However, it also disrupted the orbits of the ice giants, 
pushing them outwards. Our fifth planet, Ephesus, is thought to reside at around 9 astronomical units from the Sun, between Saturn and Uranus. After the Grand Tech ends, the gas giants of our solar system established an orbital resonance. Orbital resonance is the phenomenon that occurs when orbiting bodies exert regular periodic gravitational influence on each other, usually because their orbital periods are related by a ratio of small integers. By this time, the majority of the Sun's protoplanetary disk had been cleared, leaving a primordial Kuiper belt beyond the reaches of Neptune. This Kuiper belt, though, was likely several thousand times more massive than ours is today, and extended as close as 20 s astronomical units from the Sun, as opposed to 50 astronomical units today. Later, Neptune would begin to migrate outwards due to interactions with the disk as it begins to clear these objects. This would have happened before 4.1 billion years ago and 4.4 billion years ago, as after 400 million years the disk wouldn't have had sufficient mass to allow for the collisional grinding to fit the models of instability. The disk would need to have been above 15 Earth masses. Evidence of this migration can be found in the current orbits of the kernel. Several kernel belt objects, among which Pluto, which have to this day a 3 to 2 orbital resonance with Neptune. The migration of Neptune broke the resonant chain it had with the other planets, causing instability in the orbits of the outer planets. This instability also reaches out into the Kuiper belt, shooting asteroids and comets everywhere. This phase is known as the Late Heavy Bombardment. As Neptune approaches a semi-major axis of 28 astronomical units, the orbital instability by far affects our fifth gas giant the most. Due to the breakup of the resonant chain, the instability scatters the additional planet inward into a Saturn-crossing orbit, upon which it is pushed onto a highly eccentric Jupiter-crossing orbit, after which it is ejected from the solar system entirely, following an encounter with Jupiter. After the planet is kicked out of our solar system, the orbits of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune restabilize into their current positions. This model of course suggests that this fifth planet is still somewhere out there. Kicked out of the solar system, it has become what is known to scientists as a rogue planet, which is a planet without a parent star lost into space. It's estimated there could be as many as 50 billion rogue planets in the Milky Way galaxy alone, any one of which could potentially be our fifth giant. But since this happened billions of years ago, it is unlikely we'd ever find a trace of it. Or even if we did, we would probably not even be able to recognize it as our fifth planet. There's so much that can happen in that vast amount of time. It might have even been recaptured by another star, becoming a new planet of another system. Of course, there's no way of knowing. The only evidence that remains of the lost companion is in the form of the eerie orbits in the outer solar system. The fifth giant has no official name, though some of Nesvarni's colleagues have suggested Hades and Liber as possible names. Though none of these have officially been adopted, Hades is currently favored by the community. And honestly, I think that's kind of a cool name for him. Hades might not have been the only planet that used to be in our solar system that has been lost. There's of course Stia, which collided with the Earth to form the Moon. There's some evidence that seems to suggest that the solar system at some point had a hot Jupiter, and it's very likely planets have collided with Mercury and Uranus at some point in their past. This to explain their high iron concentrations and axial tilts. So Hades definitely wasn't the only planet gone missing. Hades, though, has by far left the strongest trail of evidence, but it's been lost for over at least four billion years now. It's really fascinating how well its influence on our solar system has been preserved. How the orbits of the solar system still show of the time it was there, even after so much time has elapsed. One could say our entire solar system is essentially one massive planetary fossil. Hades is just one example of how planets can get lost though. As mentioned earlier, there are numerous objects that likely used to be part of our solar system but aren't any longer today. The solar system didn't form in a day, and a lot of complex and interesting processes are involved with its formation. I hope this video was able to give a little more insight into the complexity of our solar system. This has been EG Science, and as always, thanks for watching.